morning everyone this is the day that the lord has made and will surely be glad and rejoice in it blessed to be awake this morning be able to have feeling in my hands seeing in my eyes hearing in my ears hunger in my stomach those that we're alive yes and so we just give god praise for all that he has done is doing and will do in our lives one thing i do know he's a promise keeper yes he is and so we give god praise for that um we're going to do our announcements and then i'm going to pray and then we're going to get into our lesson for today um i'm going to turn my volume down because i'm at i think i'm at a hundred Sorry about that. Okay, last night, um, had a Bible lesson on meekness. Let's uh, learned a couple things too. And if you missed it, boy, it was a good lesson. Uh, Journey through Scripture is every Tuesday at seven thirty, right? And I was able to finish my dinner. Um, and I was able to, that's because they gave me a head start, right? They, they gave me an uh, opportunity to, to read a scripture last night. And I want to thank everyone um, for thinking of me and my feelings. You know, sometimes we get into our feelings, right? Yeah. Um, yeah, we just give God praise for the fellowship that we had last night. It was a great time. Uh, thank you, my friend, and, and everyone who participated, the testimonies, the um yeah the sharing uh, it was a good time on the topic of meekness amen and you know you just you know it's amazing what you learn what god is doing in the lives of his people and we just give god praise for that we also have uh the watchman's 
Bible study, the men's Bible study. Um, the Watchmen is Thursday. The Watchmen's gathering is every Thursday at 7 p.m. Brother Jeff, an apostle, when he's not you know very busy to um, chime in. And we have great discussions, great talk about you know um, our stand before God, appropriate behavior, mindsets. We even talk about victories and struggles, and we just praise God for that. Um, also, we have um, TASK, T-A-S-K, Hygiene Donation Drive, and, you know, trying to be a ministry outside the walls of the ministry, and, you know, we want to make an impact, and so the Trenton Area Soup Kitchen um, is having a hygiene donation drive, and there's three ways you can donate, and we're asking for donations. Um, Zell and the, um, you know, how to uh, donate is there, Cash App, and also PayPal. Zell, Cash App, and PayPal. And if you forget, you can always go on Facebook. And I mean, it's being posted everywhere. Uh, should be uh, easy, easy to be found. Amen, amen, and amen. And don't forget the retreat. He restores my soul, which is um, May 31st, right there in front of me. May 31st, 2024, and June 2nd, 2024. At the Double Tree at the Hilton and Raleigh Crabtree Valley. And that's at 4100 Glenwood Avenue. You can call, make your reservation. You don't have to pay anything at this time. Registration is $65. Amen, amen, and amen. And Apostle is behind the scenes. He's still trying uh, to recover, um, you know, his voice. And so, you know, we're in standing in his stead and we just praise God for the opportunity to be available and able and willing um, to uh, present this morning. So we just um, want to pray and then get into our topical lesson for this morning. Amen, amen, amen. Gracious Father, well, we can't make it or do anything without you. And we just praise you. Thank you for Jesus, our Savior, the Holy Spirit, who is our comforter and helper. Thank you, Lord God, for this ministry, for apostles and all Heavenly Father who labor to make this ministry what it is. Thank you for all who attend faithfully. We thank you for all the persons who are sharing with us for the first time or are new to this uh, ministry. We just pray that Whatever is presented is 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 well to their soul. So we praise you, Lord, in advance for what you're going to do this morning. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. So we're going to continue our discussion on the Holy Spirit. Um, today we're going to focus on a scripture in the Gospel according to John, chapter fourteen, verse twenty-six, where it reads where it reads. Here it go. But the Comforter, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, will teach you everything and remind you of all that I told you. We're going to be talking this morning about the promise of the Holy Spirit, the promise of the Holy Spirit. And as I said, you know, we're giving some refresher on this teaching and, you know, Pentecost is coming where the move of the Holy Spirit was powerful. And I'm quite sure Apostle is going to have some, some mighty words for us in, in that regards. But the promise of the Holy Spirit, the promise of the Holy Spirit, um, basically talks about the role of the Holy Spirit 
when Jesus, sometime before he was going to be crucified, made a promise to the disciples. You know, he said he was going to go away, but he was going to leave us what? Comfortless. So he promised them that he would not leave them basically as orphans, right? He would not leave them fatherless. He would not leave them without a guide, without a form of teaching as he had done. He said that was going to continue, that he was going to send them another helper, the Holy Spirit, who would teach them all things and remind them of everything he said to them. And we know that the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit is not separate from God and Jesus. The Holy Spirit is not separate. He's not a separate entity. He is not um, a different aspect of God, but he is a vital member of the Godhead. And so the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit, and Jesus refers to him as comforter. He is literally basically saying that he is one called to be by our side in our time of need. He's a comforter. So John 14, 26, I want to uh, teach you, teach you this morning uh, some, some truths about the Holy Spirit coming from this text, coming from this text. Because the Holy Spirit, right? The Holy Spirit, he is a person that is divine. He's not a force. He's not an influence. He's not, he's not matter. But Jesus called him a helper. A helper who advocates, a helper who is our counselor, a helper who who comforts us, and 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 basically in in the Greek, a uh, parakletos, which means someone who is called along to help, to support, to guide, and to intercede. He's a member of the Godhead. And he has a personal relationship with the Father, the Son, and also anyone who believes in Jesus. The Holy Spirit was sent by the Father. That's what it says in here. But the Comforter, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send. He was sent by the Father in the name of the Son. Sent by the Father in the name of the Son. Sent by the Father in the name of the Son. So that says that the Father will send the Holy Spirit in Jesus' name, which means he will come in the authority and the character of Jesus. He went out, walk among, and, and do the miracles that Jesus did. You know, um, you know, take some fish and and, and loaves and, and feed five thousand. Now that's not that's that's not his his role. And we all have to remember when we're in ministry, we all have a role. Our role is not to replicate what somebody else is doing. The Holy Spirit represents Jesus, and not only does he represent him, he also does what? Glorify him. He comes to fulfill what Jesus had already done for the purpose of the Father and the Son. So again, he is not independent or separate from the Father and the Son. But he is also a 
integral part and equivocal in nature in the Godhead. Another thing we need to know about the Holy Spirit, he's a teacher and an awesome reminder. How many of us at some point in time have, oh yeah, we've been walk, we've been doing this walk with the Lord for a long time. Well, yeah, but we'll have that one incident that will almost cause us to lose our Christian character. And what will the Holy Spirit do? He'll tell us what we need. He'll tell us first we ought not to do that, but he'll also tell us what we need to do. And he will convict us into doing right. He'll convict us and he'll whip us up in our spirits to confess our wrongs. And we may not do it publicly, but I know one thing, a lot of times in our in our own prayer classes, we ask for forgiveness. Jesus said what? The Holy Spirit will do what? Teach us. He'll teach the disciples. I'm talking about going back to when Jesus was speaking to the disciples in John chapter 14. He said, the Holy Spirit will teach you all things and remind you of everything I said to you. The Holy Spirit is the source of truth. He's the source of truth, and he's also the source of wisdom who guides us into all truth. And he he's the revealer of not, I'm not talking about the surface things of God. I'm talking about the deep things of God. You know, sometimes we can get information, but information is no good without revelation, right? Apostle has said that all the time. You can get the information, but the information is no good without revelation. And this is what he's talking about. Revealer of the deep things of God. And I know sometimes, you know, you can be, you know, we can be reading our scripture, right? And, 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 and then all of a sudden, boom, the light comes on about what the scripture is basically saying. Who, who you think gave you that revelation? If some of us think we so smart, oh, yeah, I figured it out. No. It was the Holy Spirit. When we're reading and studying in the spirit of what was, what, what did we talk about last night? In the spirit of meekness. Because the spirit of meekness uh, uh, softens up those tough areas inside of us where the love of God can't get to. Where the will of God can't get to. Where the wonders of God can't get to. But somehow God, he, he allows things to happen in life that softens us up. Hello, somebody. Softens us up and gets us to a place where we just got to confess and be ready to receive what the Lord has for us. So I want to talk about four points. I want to talk about, th no, three points, three points, and I'll be done. Three points that I believe that we can learn from this text here. Three points, and I got them right here. Three points, three points. The first point is we can trust the Holy Spirit to be our helper in every situation. That's point number one. Because he's always with us. He's always wanted to comfort us. He's always wanted to strengthen us. He's always wanted to counsel us. He's always wanted to intercede on our behalf. Why? Because he's our advocate. Sent from heaven to represent the Father and the Son on our behalf here on earth to do the will of God. He's our friend. And we can rely on him and seek his guidance and help in every 
situation we do. We can trust the Holy Spirit to be our helper and uh, supporting uh, scriptures for that is Romans 8, 26 and 27. Romans 8, 26 and 27, where it says, likewise, the spirit helps us in our what? Weaknesses. For we what? We do not know what we pray for as we ought, but the spirit himself intercedes for us with groanings too deep for words. And he searches our hearts. Knows what is in the mind of the spirit because the spirit intercedes for the saints according to what? The will of God. That's Romans 8, 26 and 27. Here's another scripture, John 16, 13 and 14. John 16, 13 and 14, where it says, when the spirit of truth comes and he will come, he will guide you into all truth. For he will not speak of his own authority, but whatever he hears, he will speak. And he will declare to you the things that are to come. He will glorify me, for he will take what is mine and declare it to you. So we got Romans 8, 26 and 27, and we got John 16, 13 and 14. And that's how we can trust the Holy Spirit to be our helper in every situation with scriptural documentation. Here's the second point. Second point is, we can honor the Holy Spirit as a representative of Jesus and the Father. Jesus said he was going to send the Holy Spirit to be with us and in us as another helper or our advocate. The Holy Spirit will continue the work of Jesus and reveal him to us. The Holy Spirit is the one who glorifies the Father and the Son and testifies of their love for us and his grace. So in conclusion, we can honor the Holy Spirit as we honor the Father and the Son because the Father sent him and Jesus is the one who reveals him to us and the Holy Spirit reveals Jesus to us. Just like I said before, you know, some people said, listen, you ain't got to come to Jesus. Religion is nothing but common sense. No, that's not true, because if it just took common sense to come to Jesus, we would have done it a long time ago. Amen, somebody. My final point. We can learn from the Holy Spirit, who is our teacher and our reminder. I've had some awesome teachers over the years. Apostle's a great teacher. We got some great teachers here on Innovative Worship. There's great teachers in, in your places of worship. But there's no better teacher than the Holy Spirit who knows the mind of God and the word of God. He's the one who enlightens our minds and inspires our hearts and transforms our lives to where we are now. And he's not done with us yet. He can also help us to remember and to apply God's word in our time when our emotions and our confusion in our minds can't seem to get it together. Therefore, we should listen to him. We should study with him before we open up our Bibles. I know when I before I, 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 I get into a text or whatever, Holy Spirit, please reveal to me what I need to put together for my next presentation, what I need to learn from my study right now. In the name of Jesus, amen. And finally, we should also share with others what he has taught us and what he has reminded us of. 
So here are my three points. We can trust the Holy Spirit to be our helper in every situation. We can honor the Holy Spirit as our representative of Jesus and the Father. And we can learn from the Holy Spirit as our teacher and our reminder. And I know that this wasn't deep, 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 and it wasn't meant to be, right? This is just a refresher to what's coming because, you know, we sometimes we need background information to the deeper things that's going to be revealed to us to help us with our understanding. So there is some shout. And when we shout, we know what we're shouting about. You know, it, it amazes me. Oh, man, church was awesome um, yesterday. Yeah. What the preacher preach about? I don't know, but we had a good time. Right? So some people get information, but information is no good because the information can um, be lost right after dinner. But revelation is that which not only enters the mind, but gets down into the heart and changes you. Amen, amen, and amen. And I just pray that we will recognize the Holy Spirit for the awesome, for the awesome work that he does in our lives. And I think that, you know, we, we don't give the Holy Spirit enough credit and enough praise. But I praise God for the Holy Spirit, not only what he's doing in my life, but what he's doing in the lives of everyone who believes. Amen. Amen. And hallelujah. Now unto him who is able to keep us from falling, present us faultless before his presence with exceeding great joy. To the only wise God be glory, dominion, and power forever and ever and ever. Remember the promise of the Holy Spirit. And God bless you. Be well, be blessed, and be encouraged. God bless everyone.